In this tutorial, you'll learn how to add text to your image and how to place it behind objects. First things first, let's go and select our type tool. Now if you right click here, you can see there are a few type tool options, but let's go slow and begin with our horizontal type tool. With that tool selected, you can click and Photoshop will automatically add some placeholder text for you. Don't worry, we can change it later. It also creates a text layer for you in our layers panel. Let's click on our text again and see what options we have to play with. I'm going to go to my properties panel here. If you can't see this panel, then go to your window menu and tick properties. First up, we have our character options. Most of this will likely look quite familiar to you. I'm going to select my text so we can see the changes I'm making. You can choose your font and the weight of that font here. You can also change the size of your font here, though in this context I prefer to do it in another way, which I'll show you shortly. And you have your tracking, leading and kerning options here. If unfamiliar, it's best to just have a play here to see what each option does to achieve your desired look. You can also change the colour of your font. I'm going to change mine to white. Further down this panel, we have our paragraph options where you can choose alignments, etc. This is best used when working with bodies of text. Before moving on, I'm going to change my font to something a bit more exciting. I'm going to select my text and then search for the font I know I want by clicking here and typing. Alright, let's zoom out here and see what we're working with. Obviously, we need to change what our text says. Uh, I'm going to change this to salted, since I'd like to think that this ice cream is salted caramel flavoured, which is my favourite. Note that our text layer has changed to reflect our text. With our text layer selected, we can move this around our image, and I would like my text to be a bit bigger, and I'm going to do that using free transform. So with that layer selected, I'm going to click Ctrl T on my keyboard, and you'll notice now that I have a blue bounding box surrounding my text. Holding Alt or Option on your keyboard to constrain the text dimensions, I'm going to begin pulling to increase the size of my text. Once I'm happy, I'm going to press Enter on my keyboard. Alright, I'd like to add some more dimension to my text, and I'm going to do that with an effect. So returning to our layers panel, and with our text layer selected, I'm going to go down to this effects button and choose drop shadow. So we can have a lot of fun here, and honestly, I don't go in with a lot of rhyme or reason. I just mess around until I find something that I think looks good. So let's mess around with the opacity and the angle first. And I'm just trying to make that shadow a bit more obvious, so my text kind of sits away from the page. And let's change the colour of the shadow. I'm going to use the colour of the caramel just to tie it all back in. And let's bump up this noise to add texture. Maybe make it a bit more opaque. Alright, let's go with that. And we can see that the drop shadow effect has been added to our text layer. And we can turn that visibility on and off. Alright, so we've successfully added text, however it's just kind of floating around here, it doesn't really gel well with the image, and I'd actually like this text to appear underneath the caramel, just to add some interest. So the first thing we need to do is to select the caramel, and turn that into a layer of its own. For the time being, let's turn our text layer visibility off, so we can really concentrate on the selection. Let's use our quick selection tool here, so right click to reveal that tool. And the line between the caramel and the marble is pretty pronounced, so quick select should work fairly well here. Let's make sure we've selected our background layer, and begin clicking and dragging to select. 
Zoom in to work on any details and hold Alt or Option on your keyboard to subtract from the selection. Be quite exacting about the way you select this upper part of the caramel, but don't worry too much about the bottom as we won't see the text there. Have a final look at your selection, making sure you haven't missed anything. The next step is to turn this selection into a layer, and it's super easy. Just making sure that our background layer is selected, we're going to hit Ctrl J on our keyboard, and this will make a new copy using that selection. And you'll see we've created a new layer. So let's turn off the background layer so we can see the transparency we've created here. All right, let's turn that visibility back on and let's turn our text layer back on as well. Now, if we were to move our text over the caramel, we don't actually see a change. So why did we do all that hard work? Well, it's because we need to change the order of our layers. We actually want the caramel to lay on top of the text. So that layer needs to appear first. Let's rename this layer so there's no confusion just by double clicking And let's click and drag that layer so it sits above our text. Now when we move our text down, it appears behind our caramel layer. So let's shift that so it's a bit more legible. And that is how you can add text to your image and integrate it further by placing it behind objects.